The question comes up when you're in practice, how long do you have after an agency regulation takes effect or is promulgated to challenge it in court and seek judicial review? We have a U.S. Supreme Court case from 2024, the Corner Post Incorporated versus the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve System that addressed this and sort of changed the rules in this area a little bit. And that's what we're going to be talking about in this video. I'm Drew Stevenson. This is for my administrative law class. Let's dive in. And again, the case we're talking about is called Corner Post versus the Federal Reserve Board. The full name is the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve System, but for short, we're going to call it the Federal Reserve Board. And the rule that was challenged in this case, it was about debit card swipe fees for retailers. So when you go to pay for something at the checkout and you hand them your credit card or a debit card, which is usually... Um, co-branded with one of the credit card companies like MasterCard or Visa. And whenever you do that uh, and you pay with a debit card at a store, there's an electronic transfer of funds between different financial institutions or banks. And there's some rules about who charge, can charge who and how much the fees can be and how much the fees can be kind of pushed off onto the retailer. And the Federal Reserve Board sets the rules for that. And so the rule was this in this case was adopted in 2011, but it wasn't challenged until 2021, uh, 10 years later. But the statute involved seems to say that the statute of limitations is six years. So how do we get there? Well, let's just give some quick facts of what you need to know to understand the case. The plaintiffs were a business, basically a truck stop, the one pictured here, um, it, that opened in 2018 in one of our rural states, and which found that it found that the fees that the it had it incurred for accepting debit card payments from customers were a little burdensome. So they had opened more than six years after the rule went into effect. But because they were a new business, it didn't really impact them until they started their business. Now, before this case, courts had usually held that the statute of limitations started to run when the regulation actually went into effect. And Justice Barrett wrote the majority opinion here, which relied on the history leading up to the Administrative Procedure Act or APA and a section of this um, U.S. code that we're going to call Section 2401 to conclude that um, a, quote, right of action accrues when the plaintiff has a complete and present cause of action. And to her, that means to the majority, that means when they can sue. And if you don't exist yet, you can't sue. Now, we have a dissent in this case from Justice Jackson. She dissented, joined by uh, Sotomayor and Kagan. So this was a six to three decision, basically along party lines uh, at the very end of the 2024 term. Justice Jackson's dissent contends that the history of the statutes involved um, actually indicate that the statute of limitations was indeed supposed to start when the, stat when the regulation or rule takes effect. Um, but most of her discussion in her dissent is actually um, about how disruptive this new rule is, because it, there's a sense in which the statute of limitations kind of gives finality, and we don't have that if um, it, new businesses can start every year, and um, at that point, they get to challenge maybe a rule that's been around for 40 or 50 years, uh, or 10 years, as in the case with the rule in this case, that the rest of the industry has actually been working around or has adapted to or has based their business models around. And people, the agency has brought enforcement actions uh, about the rule and settled cases um, for violations of the rule and so forth. And now next year, someone starts a new business and they um, get a, a new chance to challenge the rule. It doesn't even have to be a brand new business. It could be an existing company that has uh, bought a new subsidiary, is branching into a new area. Like when Google bought 
um, uh, YouTube, for example, and starts doing something they haven't done before. And now there will be regulations that uh, affect the new owners that didn't before. So there's going to be a lot of uncertainty and things to sort out. And so the statute of limitations was something I wouldn't even have covered in my administrative law class before this case, because it seemed like it was well-settled law and everybody could just look up what the rule was. It was pretty straightforward. But now there's going to be a lot of pretrial litigation, I think, over whether the statute of limitations even applies in some of these kind of closer call cases where you have mergers of corporations or um, a, an existing corporation branches into a new area or decides to open a new product line that then makes it, um, it come under a regulation that they don't like. And from a more sinister standpoint, you could have a company that's been complying with the rule all along and is tired of it because it's get, they feel like it's getting too costly to comply or it's eating into their profits. So they can maybe have their lawyer set up a, a shell corporation, an LLC, and that is supposedly going to go into this uh, business. And now they get to sort of start over with a statute of limitations. And th that's the point here of the dissent. And it's a, it's a valid point, I think that um, it does introduce a lot of instability into the area of administrative law. And that concludes our lecture about the corner post case and the statute of limitations for challenging agency rules.